Hello, this is Imi from iTrade Ames. You know me. Um, let me show you today the power of this concept that we believe is the structure of the market. Thanks to Bill Williams who introduced this to us. This is a fascinating concept. Now in stage one, when you are trading the setup one, um, I have a little flu, by the way, so I'm just, I'm just, I just want to be me, you know. I don't want to be like sitting up right straight and stuff. Fuck that. So we we'll just do it the way I am. I'm, I never dress up. I never put formal clothes and stuff. I've never done it for ten years. I own one suit, which I wear sometimes <laughs> for photo opportunities and, uh, you know, going here and there. This concept is. So today, this is US 30, the Dow Jones. And this is London Open. I'll be drawing and showing you things. So the London Opens, it drops down nicely. Along its way, it creates not a, set, a stage one setup one, but definitely a setup for when you're in stage two and understand a little bit how to trade the open. Obviously, this was a fascinating trade to take, but not talking about this right now. I'm just showing you the structure. Creates the this peak down here, so AO peaks, the Ames wave or E wave. And the concept that we have is we check and count the waves using the AO or the Ames wave or E wave. It peaks, and then as the market runs out of the selling pressure the market starts to go sideways and momentum keeps arising in this way decreasing because it's not increasing so the momentum is not rising decreasing because mark price is going sideways and as it goes sideways the gator sleeps and the AO crosses the zero line which is the minimum requirement of wave four. This is some sort of wave four. And then it starts to go sideways. As it comes to the purple line here, we're beginning to see, okay, we could we could wait for a setup one. But price goes on the other side of purple. Now that's be besides the point. It goes up, but by the rules of the wave, not the strict ElliottWave.com rules, but by our rules and the Bill Williams rules, it is still a wave four. And if you if you're using Snorm's EWH or that concept, it's still a wave four. In stage three and beyond, you could have your own rules to tackle how to what to do with it. And as it starts to pause around here and starts to come down. You could still argue that it, this is a wave four. Now there's a rule that a wave four must not pull back all the way where it goes past the level of wave one. So let me draw something here. <sighs> Feeling a bit of anxiety. I don't know why. It's just today it's just been a little bit like that. If we consider this as a sequence then this most probably is a wave one, and that is wave two. And that really is a wave two because we own, we there's a pattern called B trap that usually happens in wave two. And if this is three, then this definitely is one and two. If this is one and two, and this is three, then this most probably is four. Now this four cannot go all the way up here and go beyond it. But that also means that the four can come all the way here, which means it will be somewhere around here. Now let me draw a box. If come all the way there, it would still be wave four. Would we consider it or would, it, would we trade it as a setup one? That's a different thing. I'm just talking about the power of the Elliott wave using the simple Elliott wave. 
the 10 second Elliott wave. <sighs> Anxiety, right? Breathe. If you learn to breathe like this, all you have to do is to do it for two minutes and you're done. So, we have a mechanism to find out exactly if this was a wave four. So th if this is the start, if this is one, two, and three, we can start a fib a retracement and find that out. And you can see it's 38%. So the rule here is, is that wave four can retrace all the way to 61.8, making sure that 61.8 does not go past what would be the peak of one. But when wave four is between 38 and 50, that's considered as the sweet spot. Sometimes it would form between the 23 and 38. That's fine as well, as long as the setup is there. Now, in this occasion, we let me just delete this now to make it clear. What is the next then assumption? If the next wave is going to be a wave five, where is it going to go and stop? Now, that is what it makes it very calculated form of trading. It's measured. So if you consider this as the peak, possible peak of wave four, you would enter here or here, or using this fruit signal. You go short and then add on here. Your stop loss is there because that's where you would be proven wrong. Let the price come up. If it goes above here, and that means the theory that you had formed, well, I can't technically call it a theory, the hypothesis, or the assumption that you had made was wrong. So leave that alone then. But in this case, you received what we can safely call a setup zero. Because the purple is on the wrong side, it's inside the box. And where did the price go? Just look at it. Why? Why does the market do this? I don't know. But it does it! Eight out of 10 times, if you have a wave five, it's gonna hit target zone one. That's 80%. So based on an assumption, if this is a three and that is four, then the next one might be five. And if it is a five, it's gonna go in there. What comes to your mind here? Where should you enter? And where should be your target point? Very simple. So if you entered here, you were early, you were not, you know, you were putting yourself in it. But if you waited and you had the concept to say three, four is there. And then if you were in stage two or beyond stage three, at least you could say, well, I have a setup zero. And what gives that setup zero the higher odds is that you have the three, four in there. So the three, four is there. And that's why setup zero becomes powerful because you have minimum risk. See, see that darker box? All you had to do was take 10 to 15 point risk and then put your target point just above target zone one. And guess how much? About 62 points, 60 points. So let's say 10 stop loss or 12 stop loss, 60, that's one ratio five. You can do this. If you do one ratio five, you could be Eight out of 10 times you could be wrong and you'll still be profitable if you can hit one ratio five trades once in a while. There you go. But now it doesn't end there. Guess what happens? What happens when the wave's completed? Well, it starts to do something else. Let me just delete that. Now what's happening here now? Around this point, you probably don't know what's happening. I didn't. Then what it does, so when there's this impulse wave going up and then the sideways, it breaks out 
up there. And this is pre-New York equities open, but the New York session is there. This is nine o'clock, I think, eight o'clock New York. Archie goes up, creates a beautiful setup one here, but doesn't trigger. Same scenario. What do you see? Let me draw it. Not that one. Could we say that this is wave one? This surely does look like to me a wave, wave two. You have A, B, and C here, followed by a breakout, creating a peak. That is a three. If this is three, this then is wave one, and this is wave two. Within the wave two, this peak is your A, this is your C and this is your B. Normally for ABC I will look at the price. But what does that tell me? That means that this is wave 4 and how far down can it come? Let's find out. Uh, this was um, this is a trade that um, so this is a um, new bot <laughs> or new bot uh, you can play this you can you can learn to do it wait for a breakout wait for a pullback and now this candle was to me it was clear that the pullback uh, you know where the intersection of the green and the purple is that was there and I took the trade risk is 20 target point was set up at this level and what was it let me just zoom out a bit so this is our one this is our two if I'm correct that this is an impulsive way four down now this is stage three stuff this is the stuff where you understand what oh, I gave you a spoiler there as well that if you understand the wave structure now I don't want to confuse you in stage one if you're watching this in stage one and two watch it learn from it don't trade it yet just keep watching it because as you go to stage three you will know you if you want to utilize this concept so you have the one you have the two you have the three I know that if I'm correct and this is four down I'm not trading the four down I'm trading the situation which is this but within the situation I can see the structure as well obviously my target point is going to be this and I'm thinking if it is a C ABC right if it is a four and this is impulsive it's either going to turn into a new three or it's going to be a C and C are violent. They are kind of really strong and spiky. Comes here, hits the target point, interruptions, interruptions, interruptions. Now I have to gather my thought again. Yes. So one, two, three, and four. We're still in the sequence. We're still in formation. Am I looking for setup one? No. But here's the target point and guess what happens starts to go up and this is where I realize I actually paid a rent here because I took an Apple trade and it went up and I thought hold on a second that's one two three four could this be five and this is what I did you see that the deeper the wave four is the smaller the chance or the lower the chance of wave five going past wave three. So technically by the 10 second Elliott wave rule, it won't be considered as wave five because we need to have at least a tick above. Price needs to go above this to be considered as wave five. But we know that there's a thing called truncated wave, wave five. And that happens when you have pullback more than at least 50%. So if you look at this now, this is more than 62%. So if I even count the start of wave one, so can you see it came to 62%, still valid as wave four, but it's the deepest possible wave four. And that will mean that it will reduce the possibility of a wave five going up. But anyway, 
the more it comes down the less chance of it going up going past wave 3 so I put this here draw this put my target point <sighs> guess what it did it just hits it there not just that it comes back to it bang goes down this is the power of this concept when I took this trade I had to do other stuff I just let it be come back later I find out and I I had to say this well, this is actually that trade this is this one let me put this on again I will drag and drop it this is this trade and yep so I said I can't believe this worked <laughs> I used your EWH projection for this, which is the truncated wave five, Tiger Zone one, you see. Let me bring it. So I posted it, I said, look at this. I used that as the target point and it hit it. That's the power of it. And to finish the video, congratulations to Ganesh. He's completed a stage one. Oh, that's that trade actually. Yeah, that's when I took the trade, and that's what I do it. You know, I took it, and as I pull back the J setup, Neo breakout, bang. So, welcome to B Trader to, uh, for joining our AIMS uh, team, and congratulations, Ganesh, for completing your stage one. And it's time to look at all your 20 trades, 20 days of trades, and see what you've learned and work on your trading plan for stage two where you will start with uh, what we have discussed and we can discuss a bit more if you like so this concept you can think about and you can keep it there uh, but you'll fully apply it in stage three i'm just fascinated by this concept it's, it's amazing thank you for watching I hope you liked this video, and if yes, please hit the like button. Do you have any questions or ideas for upcoming videos? Then leave a comment. Also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you never miss any future videos. See you.